So you've just bought your first TeamViewer subscription and want to know how to create a customized module to roll out to all your Mac and PC clients. I'm gonna show you how. Welcome to Mac 24 seven. So we need to open Safari from down here. And then you need to go to teamviewer.com. Now, for the purposes of this guide, I am presuming that you've already created an account and are running TeamViewer on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're gonna log into the management console. We'll click on our email address and do sign in. So when you come into your management console, it should look something like this, or if you've added other computers in the past, you might have a list of computers on there. What we're gonna look at is the design and deploy area. Now, let me stress that this is for the subscription only customers because they have access to this customization and the personal accounts, the free ones don't. So this is if you're, you, you've got a business package, you've got a corporate package, uh, which if you're running the at work, you more than likely have. So I'd like you to look at add custom module at the top here. If you click there, it gives you a few options to go to the Android host, put install a full client, a normal host, a quick join or a quick support. I'm interested in the host because the host, when the client installs, it gets automatically added to my computers. So this area over here and gives you really quick access to that client. Let's go through this window one step at a time. So I'm just gonna name my host Mac 24 seven host, and I'm gonna give the same title to the module window. So I've got Mac 24 seven host. You can see all the customizable elements down either side here. Nice feature is the logo. So I'm gonna just drop in the Mac 24 seven logo into this area, just drag and drop usual and click save uh, you can change the text color i'm just going to make it blue and darker blue like that and um, if you want to change the background color you can do i prefer to leave it nice and white quite clean and likewise if you want to change the text here and uh, then you can do to whatever you would like to tell your client again i tend to leave it like this I don't feel the need to change it, but you may want to change it for something more custom and specific to your business. If we look at the options down the right hand side, the ticks are basically talking about adding the computers to the list that you can see over here. Uh, this is automatically adding it to my computers. Obviously, if you if you have lots of categories in here, which you might do if you created groups, you might be able to assign it to a, a certain person's office or a group of offices in a building. Um, we've got an option here to allow the client to initiate a service case. The service case is when they're requesting support and it will pop up in your, your window in TeamViewer. If you don't want to allow them to do that, just untick this. The TeamViewer policies are things like telling the uh, client application to update once a week, it might restrict access to certain features so the, that user can't change security settings. There's a whole host of different options. And I'll, I'll take you through some of those in a different video, but for now, we're just gonna leave it as a none. Make sure you leave allow account assignment unticked. This means we don't have to grant easy access on the client side. It'll automatically grant you that privilege level so you can just log straight in and there's no dealing on the client side. Finally, you can put a disclaimer if you need to and warn the client that they're doing in the installation of this module at their own risk. Um, if it's your business, you probably don't need to do that. But if you're providing remote support for somebody outside of your company, it's probably worth putting a disclaimer in there. And finally, we're going to click save. So when you've got your client module, you need to copy this link here and email it to the person or the client computer that you are wanting to connect to and add to your account. So we're gonna do that now. So now we're on the PC side and I need you to open up Google Chrome 
and we need to enter the web address that we created in the team viewer management console, which was this one at the top. Straight away, you see the Mac 24 seven icon at the top of the page, the one we customized in the team viewer management console. And likewise, the team viewer host app has downloaded instantly. So we'll go to install that. Click yes. And we're not going to go into the advanced settings. It's not something that you really need right now. So we'll just skip past that. This is obviously if you're a business, then you're going to go for a company. If you're going to access home computers, friends and family, then you want to go for both the above. But in this scenario, we'll just go for company and commercial use. So we'll go forward, accept those terms. It'll install fairly quickly. And then, so this box is for setting up unattended access. This means that your IT administrator, or whoever has the privileges, can log on without any user interaction on the client side. So we'll click through next. Now this is quite an interesting point here that the computer name that's been given is the name of your computer as it stands. If you've not renamed it in the system settings, then this will be the default name of your computer. I'm going to change it here to Mac 24 seven. Just do a quick password. So note when we look back at this, in the team viewer management console, it won't say this computer name, it'll say whatever your computer name was to start with. If you want it to automatically pre-fill this, you have to name your computer in your system settings, then it'll fill it in. Otherwise, we'll just have to rename it in the team viewer management console, which isn't difficult. And I'll show you how to do that when we get back to the Mac. So just gonna click next. So it's displaying the ID. We don't really need it now because it's going to be added to our computers that we'll be able to view in the management console in a second. So I'll click finish. So TeamView is now telling us it's going to assign it to the company account, which is what we wanted when we uncheck the box in the custom module configuration. So at this point, we just click allow and finish and we're all set up. You've got your ID and your password there. If you need to hand it out to other people, but just be aware of any security issues that you might come across. So I'm just going to OK this and then we'll flip back to the Mac to have a look at it from there. Back on the Mac in the management console, we can see that the computer just added has appeared here. Now, like we were talking about before, it's still named as the computer and Back on the Mac, we can see that the computer that we just added has appeared here. And like I was saying before, the name for the computer has not changed, even though we've changed it on the host on the client side. How to do that on this side is to just click. So you can do that. So you need, you can do that one. So you can do that one of two ways on this side. If we go to the little settings wheel and head to properties, we can change it in here quite easily and then just save it. Alternatively, we can go to connect, which will give you the option to open your team viewer locally. So this is if you've got the, the so, is it, um, so this is if you've got the, so this is if you've got the team viewer full hot. So this is if you've got the team viewer app on your Mac installed. So this is if you've got the team viewer app. So this is if you've, so this is if you've got the team viewer full app on your Mac. So this is if you've got the team viewer full app already installed on your Mac, we can just click on there. And if you want to keep it as the way we open it from the web, and if you want to, and if you want to make it the default way to open from this area, you just clicked, remember this choice hit connect. It'll ask you if you want to allow this page to open team viewer and we click allow. So we will just tap in the password that we hopefully made a note of before. And that'll connect us to the PC. So just want to close this window down now and just show you something else within the team viewer app. So as you can see, this is the second of the options to rename the computer itself. 
if we just click on the actual computer name under my computers and again it's a similar one to the the web page it gives you this uh, settings cog um, and you click on properties um, I'm gonna name it Mac 24 7 and here you've got opportunity to enter the password into TeamViewer so that it will remember it every time you log onto this computer. So I'm just going to pop my details in here and OK that. And now we double click for the connection and it opens it up. So we're now looking at the PC as we were before, but through the Mac itself. I'll make it full screen. Now, one thing to note regarding that password is that it is actually creating a random password for security purposes. Now, if you want to change that, you just need to change the setting within TeamViewer on the client side. So if you go to the little power and right click on the TeamViewer logo and show the status dialog, this is the password that we just entered. However, if you go to the settings, and click on grant at Mac 24 7 easy access and OK that each time you log in from your administrator account it will automatically go through regardless of the random password it's a good security feature really if any you give your details to anybody else to log into your computer as soon as you finish the session it will reset so that they will not have access straight away. But you as the administrator will now have full access to that computer all the time. So we're just gonna come out of the computer itself. We're gonna just click the X and we're back into the uh, TeamViewer app. I'd just like to show you that the Grant Easy Access now works. So if we double click on the Mac 24 seven PC, it opens it straight away without having the need to enter a password. So just a, a quick thing that you could do at this point, you could create a group for your computers. If you go to this little down arrow at the top, you can add a new group. And let's say that's in our office. You've created the office group there. And all you're going to do now is drag that computer into the office uh, group. So maybe in the future you add different computers in different offices, but you want to keep them together just so it's nicely sorted and displays nicely. They can all be dragged and dropped into here. When you initially connect and add a client, it will drop it into my computers. You then do have to move it from there. It'll always appear at the top as a recent connection, if it's indeed a recent connection. But this is a great way to group all your computers so that it's easy and manageable and it just sets it out nicely and it's visually quite clean to look at. So that's your guide to creating a customized module in TeamViewer. If you found it interesting and learned something new, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. So you've bought... So you've bought... I want to roll out. See, so uh, customize module. Customize. So that was your guys. So that was your guy. So that was your guide to grow. So that was your guide to creating a. So that was your guide. So that's your guide from. One more. One more. One more.